This video is brought to you by the good folks at KEH. Not only is KEH the oldest and biggest at what they do, buying and selling exclusively used camera gear of all sorts since 1979, but they do it well with integrity and both a 180-day warranty and 21-day return policy, free shipping on orders of $75 or more. Which is why, because they make it as futz-free a process as possible, they are our go-to whenever we are looking to fund new purchases by selling our own gear or buying that special used piece of kit properly graded and checked when we want to go quirky or old school. Check them out using the special links and 5% discount or bonus code in the video description below. Thank you, KEH. Yeah, yeah, Nikon Z8, the latest mirrorless Wunderkind, blah de blah 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 F that. Let's talk real Nikon. Let's talk iconic Nikon. Let's talk iconic digital Nikon, not an oxymoron, like the setup back in the late 2000 aughts used by legendary photographer Jay Maisel on the streets of New York, the I don't need no stinking 45 megapixels, 12 megapixels in your face, baby, Nikon D3S, coupled to, who cares, it's called a consumer grade lens, AFS FX Nikkor 28 to 300 F 3.5 to 5.6 G ED VR. Mm. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. That was fun. Anyone recognize the homage there? And today I want to share with you a quick take on the even now surprisingly appealing, in spite of its age, weight, and size, 2007 Nikon DSLR flagship D3S, which as I mentioned just moments ago, Jay Maisel used with consumer-oriented 10.7x zoom ratio 28 to 300. And I want to talk about this lens too. Inspired by Maisel, I was able to borrow an almost identical D3 kit from our friends at KEH. I wanted to see, at least at a technical and process level, how could I possibly see any more, what Maisel saw. Kind of like back in 2000, almost a decade before the D3S was introduced, when I made a pilgrimage to Vinci, Italy, and the home of Wright Leonardo da Vinci, so that I could look out the very same windows he once did to see approximately what he saw or at least what was transmitted to his brain via his optic nerve. Because what an artist sees, like anyone really, is hardly a function simply of what is transmitted to his or her brain, but instead even more a function of a lifetime of experiences to that point. Those experiences become the set of filters through which we can maintain some semblance of equilibrium rather than being overwhelmed by the otherwise impossibly rich stimuli everywhere around us. Put differently, one should not overestimate his or her ability to properly understand what it is to walk a mile in anyone else's shoes. But then again, one should not underestimate the power of history to inspire and inform. Especially returning to the here and now, when you can pick up a used D3 and 28 to 300 in excellent or excellent plus condition for less than half the price of a Z8 alone over at today's sponsor, KEH. The question is, should you? Let's get into it. When it came out in 2007, the D3, not the D3S, was Nikon's first full-frame DSLR, a $5,000 pro-grade workhorse equivalent to a bit more than seven grand today. A couple of years later, when the D3S came along, same resolution but with a new processor, the 78-year-old Brooklyn-born Maisel had created an extraordinarily successful body of work across multiple genres beginning in the 1950s, including, among so many other accomplishments, the album cover for Miles Davis's Kind of Blue in 1959. At the same time, now I'm talking 2009 again, Maisel had reached a point in his life where, having gone through all of the obvious choices for pro photographers from Exacta to Leica to Hasselblad and more, Prime's kind of guy, he wanted one camera and one lens. And he wanted to leverage everything that technology could do for him. A viewfinder that showed him framing identical to what the sensor would capture check. High speed, continuous shooting. Yes, please. We'll have an assistant go through them all later. Exposure bracketing. Why not? You betcha. One lens to replace his 28, 35, 50, 75, 90, 135, 180, and 300 millimeter lenses. Oh, baby. Yeah. 
despite his initial skepticism that the 28 to 300 could match the sharpness of his primes. It turns out that his skepticism was unfounded, that Lenz really did do it all for Jay. But how does that kit fare for the modern eye more than a decade on from then? As usual, Claudia and I shot with it for a bit on the streets of New York, and since we actually had a Z8 handy with us, along with the Z24-120 to F4, we were able to draw some direct comparisons and conclusions. First, the D3 is a beast, in a good way. It's about the same size as my own Canon 1D, significantly larger than the Z8, and it dwarfs Claudia's Z7 II. Way, way heavier than either of its younger siblings. Heavier than the Z9, actually, by about 80 grams, marginally taller and wider, though slightly shallower. Still, when you add those two lenses into the mix and go forth into the real world, the difference in weight between our D3 kit and the Z8 kit felt much less significant. Second, in spite of it being a beast, I found it to be very comfortable in hand. I could imagine, unlike just about any camera made today, shooting it successfully with gloves on, and I enjoyed the mechanical precision of the thing right down to the shutter release. Third, I found, as I always do, that the single lens reflex viewfinder displayed the full dynamic range of the scene, something no EVF I've ever tested has been able to replicate. Although fourth, I found the mirror slap to interfere with my ability to shoot at especially slow shutter speeds, amplified by the fact that the camera holding the lens IS aside has no in-body image stabilization. Fifth, no newsflash, the Z8's autofocus was far surer and zippier. Sixth, no newsflash again, the Z8's buffer was bigger and dramatically faster. Seventh, duh, 12 megapixels isn't 24 megapixels, never mind the Z8's 45 megapixels. Hold that thought while we turn to the lens. So, the lens, eighth. The 28 to 300 was sharper than I'd anticipated. Impressive corner to corner. Although it was not nearly as sharp once I moved past 180 millimeters or so. Ninth, on the other hand, contrast was significantly lower from 28 millimeters on, if easily elevated in post. Tenth. Chromatic aberration toward the edges was very noticeable, though pretty correctable enough in post plying the lens profile and defringing and 11th distortion was distressingly pronounced and not so easily corrected in post, even with a lens profile, which clearly should have done more in short. While the D3 was more fun and rewarding than I'd anticipated, the facts remained that A, under critical viewing, the decade and a half old D3 kit didn't hold a candle to the Z8 kit, even with the greater reach of the F mount 28 to 300 versus the 24 to 120. And B, the Z8 made it dramatically easier to get the shot from the IBIS to the autofocus to the fact that the EVF made it a cakewalk to dial in the exposure better, far more often manually by eye than by using the D3's meter. It's just undeniable. Yet that, along with, what is it, 550 these days, will buy you a latte at Starbucks while telling you absolutely nothing about how the D3 will feel in your hands, how rewarding the experience the D3 may be for you, how much you like the resultant images at the sizes and viewing distances relevant to you. And not any part of this other than your own eye, mastery of the tool, and yeah, ambition will prevent you from getting spectacular shots at print sizes up to say, since we're talking coffee, a coffee table sized photo book.
maybe bigger, depends on your priorities and evaluations. But should you actually buy Jay Maisel's early 2000s go-to kit? Let's put it like this. If you enjoy photography, not only for the imagery, if you appreciate the process of shooting, the wider dynamic range that comes through a single lens prism finder to your eye, if not the sensor, the sense of mastery that comes from working with cameras from an earlier era without many of today's mod cons, as the Brits would say, the sense of history flowing through your hands when you do shoot, the inspiration that comes from that history. If you don't crop the crap out of an image like so many of us do, if you don't need the resolution or speed the best modern cameras and lenses can offer you, if you don't mind using old school compact flashcards and getting a card reader for them, then yes, I think the D3 and its S and X variants make far more sense, actually, than any Nikon film camera, don't hate me, from the original F or Photomic FTN through what is arguably the greatest of Nikon's flagship 35mm cameras, the F2. More sense, I suspect, for some of us, than the successors to the D3 series, that is the D4, 5, and 6, but hold that thought. You will still get very much the same feel in hand of the legendary film cameras, even if you do lose the interchangeable finders. But the image quality on even the 12 megapixel D3 will exceed what can be captured on, say, 35 millimeter Tri-X film. More importantly, you will have the instantaneous feedback a digital workflow offers with the accelerated in-the-field learning possible because of it. And with the same F-mount used by those older film cameras, as well as the newer flagship D-series, you can also attach lenses far more performant to the D3 than the impressive for what it is, 28 to 300, like the incredible AFS Nikkor 105 1.4 EED. On the other hand, if speed, resolution, ease of use, and ultimate lens IQ are more important to you, and you have the budget for it, I'd say blow straight past F-mount Nikons, film or digital, and go Z-System full stop. Because you know what? The Z-System, cameras and lenses, it is next generation, and relatively speaking, it is spectacular. But I do have to close with this. If owning one of the greatest DSLRs of all time, film or digital, is important to you, you don't need insane burst rates or buffer size and speed, and you are not interested in cropping the crap out of an image and or aren't planning to make mural-sized prints. You can basically have it all in the D3 for less than 700 bucks at a point in time when used D5s, for example, go for no less than three times that price. Used D6s go for more like five times that price. And they all use the exact same lenses. In this context, I'd call the D3 especially more than the 28 to 300. I'd opt for faster, higher IQ primes. A steal. A big shout out to KEH for sponsoring this video. A great resource for finding just this kind of gear. Check them out using the special links and 5% discount or bonus code in the video description below. Thank you, KEH. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, join the conversation in the comments section below because this is an exceptional audience. If you'd like help with a portfolio review, gear selection, finding or honing your artistic voice, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one mentoring video call via Zoom at 3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, please consider supporting our work by using the no cost to you affiliate links down below, sending us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially joining us on Patreon links down below as well. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.